God bless you, people of God. I greet you all in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, we thank God for today. We thank God for His mercy in the earth forever and His faithfulness. It is because of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed. Because His compassion fails not. They are new every morning. This morning, I want us to look into this thing they call Easter sunrising services. You know how it creeps into the church because it is not a celebration of, it is not, um, it's supposed, it's, it's not, the, the body of Christ is not supposed to be celebrating Easter because Easter is a goddess of Babylon. And um, according to um, the, according to the new Ongar's Bible dictionary, before, let me just pray, Father, in the name of Jesus. I ask that you grant me the grace to communicate, O oh God, to your people. And I also pray that you will open the eyes of the people of the body of Christ so that we should stop celebrating this pagan, O oh God, um, this pagan goddess and the God. O oh Lord, forgive us and have mercy upon us in Jesus' name. We see that um, this whole thing came with the story of... Um, Nimrod, Seminary, Semiramis, and uh, Tammuz. This is where all witchcraft started, where all worship of evil started with these three names, Nimrod. But I, yesterday I took time to really do research on these things. Then I discovered that even these names, um, the Bible mentioned Nimrod being a great hunter before God and that where God said that he was going to waste. Micah 5 says God said that he will waste the, the land of Nimrod. And then um, the Bible did not tell us that Nimrod was um, the husband of Semi, Semiramis or whatever they call her name. And then that um, the whole story, I don't know where they come from, you know, and how Nimrod and how Shem killed Nimrod and then he and um, the wife you know said that she got pregnant by the rays of the sun but you know in as much as this thing looks like a fable unfortunately it became so the belief became so strong that it became it entered into the body of Christ to a point of worship um, I was able to find out that somebody somewhere along the line wrote a book bringing these things in and you know, telling the story like a fable and uh, the fable unfortunately was adopted anyway um, according to Unger's Bible Dictionary the word Easter is of Saxon origin Estra the goddess of spring in whose honor sacrifices we are all fired about Passover time. Around Passover time, you see that Easter always falls around Passover, Jewish Passover. What God actually asks us to celebrate is Passover. You know, when God gave his law, he said that do not add, do not subtract. And every law that God gave, as I mentioned in one of my videos, God asks us to meet with him, the yearly feast, they have three yearly feasts. One of those feasts is Passover feast, and in this yearly feast, we were to to bring in, to bring God our first fruit harvest, including the firstborn, to present them to God and not come empty-handed. So, then we have the feast of um, the feast of um, weeks. That is um, for the holy the time the Holy Spirit was given. The Passover celebrates the the deliverance of Egypt through the blood of the Lamb, and the final we have the Feast of Boots, the Tabernacle of the Lord, the with us. So these are the things that God said, the feast that God asked us to celebrate. He did not ask us to celebrate Easter. So, and we are not supposed to add Easter, because he said, don't add, don't subtract. And another thing the Lord said was, according to the Word of God, he said, in Deuteronomy 12, 29 to 32, he said, When the Lord thy God shall cut off the nations from before thee, whither thou goest to possess them, and thou succeed them, and dwellest in their land, take heed to thyself that thou be not snared by following them. After that, 
they be destroyed before thee. And that thou inquire not after their gods, saying, How did these nations serve their gods? Even so will I do likewise. Thou shalt not do so unto the Lord thy God. For every abomination to the Lord, which he hated, have they done unto their gods. For even their sons and their daughters, they have burnt in the fire to their gods. What things soever I command you, observe to do it. Thou shalt not add thereto, nor diminish. That's the word of God. Don't add, don't diminish. So God said we should not inquire of how this, how the um, the heathens worship their gods. Not even to think of borrowing their god and you know Christianizing their god. We see also that um, um, in. God also warned, like in Deuteronomy 4, 19, he said, Unless thou lift up thy eyes unto heaven, and when thou seest the sun and the moon and the stars, even all the hosts of heaven should be driven to worship them and serve them, which the Lord thy God had divided unto all nations. And that they, as, do not do that. And then Ezekiel 8, 16, And he brought me into the inner court of the Lord's house, and behold, at the door of the temple of the Lord, between the porch and the altar, were about five and twenty men, with their backs towards the temple of the Lord and their faces towards the east, and they worship the sun towards the east. They worship the sun towards the east. So, what is happening in Easter rising, Easter sun rising services is the worship of the sun. So, we are going to go into that the worship of the sun because it's about sun God. The rising sun service is about the sun God, the worship of the sun, and Easter is. The goddess of Babylon, or we call her Ishtar, or she has a lot of names. She has a lot of names. Let me see if I can get most of the names of this goddess. So they call her Ishtar. The the people that call her Ishtar, where they, it is the goddess of Akkadian or Assyrian pantheon, and it's also the Assyrian goddess of love. She was the astronaut of the Jews or Hebrews. She is the planetary Venus, and in general features corresponds with the classical goddess of love. Her name Ishtar is that by which was known as in Assyria. Ishtar, you know, in Assyria they call her Ishtar. So in um, the Anglo, they call them Anglo-Saxon or whatever, they call her, uh, uh, they call her Esther, Estra. The goddess of the rising light of and of light of day and spring. So April was called Easter Monad because they do sacrifice to her on April. So the Phoenician name for Easter was Astart. And the later Mendian form of which was Ashtar. Jeremiah called her the Queen of Heaven. At times they call her the goddess of the chase. She's Diana. She is um, mother in, in, in the Catholic Virgin Mary, and um, so so the story goes this way that Easter that um, so the English word actually is Easter, the one we the one the church is celebrating. The English word is simply Easter. So Easter is the English word. Now the the story goes this way that which to me look like a fable story. The story goes this way that um, that Shem killed Nimrod because of his evil. And um, the wife was so devastated and Shem killed Nimrod and cut the body into pieces and scattered the body all over the place. And this woman went and tried to pick up the pieces of the body and could not. So she had to follow, um, she had to go into the earth, whatever. And after three days, she resurrected with her son. She conceived her son with the help of the rays of the sun, with the rays of the sun. That is sun god. So... So when she born that son, she called the son, the son, that is how Tammuz was born. You see that even in the destiny, God, when God took him, him, Ezekiel to the temple, he showed, her, he showed him where the people were crying for Tammuz. That is, 
the, you see, people were crying for Tammuz because Tammuz, that we precede the resurrection of Tammuz. The resurrection, because Tammuz became Nimrod, come back to life. Tammuz was Nimrod, come back to life. After three days in the grave. So both she, both seminaries, which is Ishtar, and um, Tammuz, who was who came back as Nimrod again, we are raised, we are resurrected on the third day. So you are looking at now the Easter egg. So this, you call it now rebirth, rebirth, renewal, resurrection. So according to Ongar's Bible Dictionary, the word Easter is of southern origin, Estra, the goddess of spring, in whose honor sacrifices were offered about Passover time. During Passover time, they offered the sacrifices. By the 8th century, by the 8th century, Anglo-Saxons adopted the name to designate the celebration of Christ's resurrection. Now they are mixing the clean with the unclean. God said we should not mix the clean with the unclean. Now they are mixing the clean with the unclean. So Easter commemorates the celebration of the conception and the rebirth of Nimrod in the person of Tammuz. She does claims to have created a new beginning. That is, Easter claims she have created a new beginning through and renewed the world and thus revived and updated their pagan religion, the ones held through Nimrod. So her baby was thus reborn, reincarnated, renewed, Nimrod. The baby Tammuz was uh, the, the renewed Nimrod. They rebirthed Nimrod. The, re, the resurrected Nimrod. And then, you know, when they finished celebrating this Easter, da 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 da, the renewed of the season with the spring, in autumn, that is the fourth time, this woman, Easter, and her son, Tammuz, returned to underground, the land of the dead, or underground the earth. They return to that place to be resurrected again next spring. You see? So, what people are actually doing is that the celebration of Easter is the revival. The revival of the spirit. So, when they, they are celebrating the resurrection of the spirit in the spring, the revival, the renewal of this spirit, and so there goes the Easter. Um, there goes the Easter egg. Let's look at the origin of the Easter egg, the Easter customs. So, according to what I saw, said so the most widely practiced customs on Easter Sunday relate to the symbol of the rabbit, Easter bunny, and the egg. The rabbit was a symbol associated with the El Store. That is. When the um, Saxons were uh, celebrating a, or making sacrifices to to this goddess Esther, uh, Esther, representing the beginning of the springtime, so the rabbit was a symbol associated with it. Likewise, the egg has come to represent spring, fertility, and renewal. Egg represents spring, fertility, and renewal. So, in Germanic mythology, it is said that. Ostra healed a wounded bird she found in the woods by changing it into a hare. Still partially a bird, the hare showed its gratitude to the goddess by laying eggs as gift. Phoebus. So the egg is a symbol of fertility and of renewed life, which goes back to the ancient Egyptians and Persians, who had also the custom of coloring and eating eggs during their spring festival. So in ancient Egypt, the egg symbolized the sun. While for the Babylonians, the egg represents the hatching of the Venus Ishtar, who fell from the heaven to the Euphrates. So too many stories, too many fables surrounding this thing they call Easter. Now why would the Christians adopt this worship of Satan? Worship of Easter 
the Tamils is the sun god. That's why they said sun rising services. The Tamils is the sun god. We see that the early Christians were persecuted because the Romans were worshipping Roman Caesars and the early Christians could not worship. You know, so there was so much persecution that went through the early church. So, but the persecution was not stopping Christianity because as long as the persecution was going on, Christianity was growing fast, was still growing. They could not terminate it. So certain device it means, and that means is the entrance of Constantine into the body of Christ. That is to bring in a situation where he will change God's order of things. So, we see that the Constantine and the Council of Nice, Constantine brought in the, you know, um, the pagan gods into mix it with Christianity, into the church. So now in Catholic you have Queen of Heaven, that is still Ishtar, the Queen of Heaven, and Nimrod is Baal. So we have Mother and Son, Virgin Mary and the Son. Virgin Mary and the so-called Jesus, but it is um, Easter and um, Tammuz. So I know that um, the always I, I grew up um, with some people that used to worship um, in Catholics. They always pray to the Queen of Heaven, Nenkeligwe, the Queen of Heaven. So the Queen of Heaven is Easter, Easter. Venus, Seminaries, name her, call her any name. She has, she has too many names. And um, the Baal is the sun god. The sun god is the Baal. So now the Constantine brought in these practices and tried to change the face of, the, of Christianity. The church accepted it. And then in the process of time, Constantine and the Council of Nicaea, I don't know how you pronounce it, and the Council of Nicaea, they outlawed so many Jewish feasts and um, put Easter to be celebrated on Sunday and um, Okay, I took some break um, from and to do some few things. Okay, let's continue. Um, Constantine changed a lot of things at law Jewish feasts and replaced them with some things, and they tried to replace Passover with the celebration of Easter. That's why many Christians, the Gentile believers, are not celebrating Passover. But as the Lord is Restoring his order in the body of Christ, many believers are beginning to celebrate Passover. But believers in Christ are not supposed to celebrate um, Easter because when you celebrate Easter, you are actually you are actually worshiping Easter, the goddess you know, the goddess Isha, Easter. You may say you don't worship Satan, but you are doing it. So, and when the Easter sunrise services is the worship of sun god because. Um, this Easter believes that the rays of the sun, that he conceived Tammuz through the rays of the sun. So as the Christians and believers are celebrating Easter and Easter sun rising service, they are celebrating this woman called Easter and um, the devil called Easter and the goddess of spring or goddess of fertility or whatever you call it. And then um, the sunrise, Easter sunrise services is the celebrating of the um, sun god, that is Baal. And when the people of God were worshipping, when the people of God were worshipping, um, were facing the east, that's what drove God out of the temple. God was driven out of Solomon's temple because of this practice. So if when the church begins to worship, saying they are doing Easter and uh, sunrise services, they are driving God out of the church. God cannot, you cannot mix 
You cannot mix holy with the profane. God commanded that we should not mix holy and profane. We shall not mix clean and unclean. We shall not mix. God said He will not share His glory with man or His He prays with graven image. So many people, uh, it did not start with the early church. Jesus did not introduce. Now, what the early church did after the resurrection of Jesus, we saw that after the resurrection of Jesus Christ, Jesus resurrected on the first day of the week. So let us get some scriptures. And so the church, early church, began to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus every first day of the week. They call it the Lord's Day. You know, so First Corinthians 16, 2, on the first day of every week, each one of you should set aside a sum of money in keeping with your income, saving it up so that when I come, no collection will have to be made because they met every first day of the week. So how did that, you know, because Matthew 28, 1, we saw that Mary Magdalene went to the tomb. Uh, some women went to the tomb after the Sabbath. So in, the, in the end of the Sabbath, as it began to down towards the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulchre. So, and look, look at how. In Luke chapter 24, verse 1, on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices. They had, they had prepared and went to the tomb. It was there that they met angel, the angel that, or the two angels that, you know, uh, gave them the information that Jesus had, you know, was no longer in the grave, that he was risen. So in Acts 27, and upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached unto them, ready to depart on the morrow and continued his speech until midnight. So, and Acts 2, 46 to 47, and they continued, and they continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meal, the meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily as should be. So we see that the early church met daily. They met every day, breaking bread in, from house to house, sharing meals and worshiping God. And then on Saturday, they celebrate, on the end of the day, they celebrate Sabbath, um, which uh, I don't want to go into that right now. And then on the first day of the week, they call it the Lord's Day. They call it the Lord's Day. They, they met and celebrated the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the day they celebrate the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, the first day of the week. So, the church need to stay away from the worship of idol or mixing the clean from God. And let us not take these things for granted because these will send people, will separate, this, will separate people from God. Nothing unclean will enter into the kingdom of God. The word of God said that unto, unto, God said that unto him shall every knee bow. He will not share his glory. So he was not going, he's not going to share his glory with Easter. That is the goddess of English name for Easter. It's Easter. So why would church celebrate Easter? Why? Why would church celebrate a goddess? Why don't you say celebrating Satan in the church? Then that's exactly the same thing. So why would church celebrate Easter? Easter. Venus. Um, Queen of Heaven. That's all her names. So the church is not doing the right thing. And that causes... Then they say, Easter sunrise service. Where did they get that name from the Bible? To celebrate sunrise services. Sunrise, that is the rays of the sun. That is the bow, God's sun God. God have mercy upon the body of Christ. God have mercy upon us. Forgive us, O God, and open our eyes to show us where we have missed it. So that we will, Father Lord, that we will return. We will return Father Lord, and stop worshipping Satan in the name of celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Satan use, he just kind of use it interpretably. He has nothing to do with the resurrection of Jesus but the so-called fable, I call it fable because it's really fable, the resurrection of Tammuz, or of Nimrod, the renewal, and then the, there are some churches, unfortunately, that are doing Easter hunt egg, egg hunt.
Hello, my friend. Hello, my friend. God bless you, people of God. I thank you. Uh, I thank you for listening. And please, you know, like and subscribe and leave your comment. If you have any question, please, you know, um, you, my email is attached. God bless you all in Jesus' name. Amen.